Hey y'all, welcome back to Strung Out Outdoors. Today we're going to be going over off-season projects you can do around your hunting property, whether it's improvements or maintenance and stuff like that. Now we got a lot to go over, so y'all hang on and let's jump right to it. Well y'all, spring is officially here. And while most of us rather be out there chasing after turkey or ripping some lips on pre-spawn bass, there's a lot to be done out here in the deer woods too. Right now, does are preparing to birth fawns and yearling bucks will be dispersing to find new home ranges. And this is the perfect time to make habitat improvements that will benefit mama and the fawns or to attract and hold the newly dispersed deer. Now coming out of the winter months, the deer will be switching from survival mode over to growth mode, so their main focus will be on food. And as bucks are recovering from the rut and harsh winters, the does will be entering their final stages of pregnancy. This is also when the bucks start growing new antlers, so quality food high in protein are critical right now. And that's one of the things I love about clover. The deer love it, it's high in protein, and it's one of the first things that green up in the spring, and it's easy to maintain. With selective herbicides like cleft for grasses and butyrac for broadleaves and an occasional mowing, clover is hard to beat. Now if you're one of those that don't have food plots, don't worry about it. You can still offer food and protein through feeders, natural brows, hinge cutting, timber thinning, and stuff like that. Now what I like to do is use a gravity feeder and mix corn and protein together because usually the deer won't eat protein by itself to start off with so I mix it at about a 75% corn to a 25% protein ratio and add a little more protein each time until the deer are eating just straight protein. Now pour in a little bit of corn then pour in a little protein, take your hand or a stick, mix it up, pour in a little more corn, a little more protein, mix it up until your feeder is full. Now another important factor right now is minerals. Now mineral blocks alone won't grow bigger racks, but they're still important to a deer's diet at this time of year because they help a lactate and doze and a deer's digestive system. And deer are also craving salt at this time of year because of the sodium deficiency from the massive intake of water and potassium from all the grain in their diet at this time during the spring and the summer. But for more information on deer minerals, I'll post it up here or put it down in the description below the video or you can go back to my page when you're done watching this video and check it out. It's called Deer Mineral Comparison Test and it goes over everything you'd want to know about deer minerals and growing antlers. Now everybody's property is going to be different and improvements are going to vary from land to land so do your homework see what improvements your property needs. Maybe your property offers food and water but it lacks cover or vice versa. Or maybe your property is all hardwoods and the canopies are closed up, allowing little to no sunlight to reach the forest floor. Then you should probably consider doing some timber thinning. This will allow sunlight to reach the floor, promoting growth of new shrubs, berries, briars, vines, saplings, and stuff like that. And the deer love that. Now I know there's a lot of y'all out there who have properties that consist of wide open fields and it has no food and no cover and you don't know what to do with it. Well, you can always plant some switchgrass and conifers for security and cover, put you some fruit and nut bearing trees in there, put you in a food plot and screen it off, that way the deer feels secure in there. And the plan is to have diversity, food, water, cover. Without one of those things, the deer are gonna leave your property and they'll seek it out somewhere else. Now you can have all the food in the world on your property and if the deer don't feel safe in it, they'll either go nocturnal or avoid it altogether. And you don't want either one of those. I get people asking all the time, why won't the deer hit my food plot? Well, you're either planting the wrong thing at the wrong time, or the deer don't feel secure in it. Or possibly, your neighbor might be planting something better than you. Now I do my homework, realize what's going on around me, put in some hard work, and in time, you can have your own little deer paradise too. So what I've done is I went through and I put Egyptian wheat through the backside of all this. That way it won't block out the 
the switch grass because of the position of the sun. The switch grass will be in the front and the Egyptian wheat will be in the back. The Egyptian wheat will grow up this year, the switch grass won't. It'll take a year or two for the switch grass to get some height on it. And then next year I'll come back through. If the switch grass is up to my liking, I'll just put switch grass where the Egyptian wheat was. If not, I'll just put some more Egyptian wheat. Now if any of y'all go plant these switch grass seeds, make sure you got your cedar set down really low because these seeds are tiny. See that? About as big as a mustard seed. All right, y'all, I apologize in advance if the lighting's a little bit bad right here, but I'm trying to stay in the shade intentionally because if you can't tell, I am cooked red as a devil right now. Me and Slayer was out doing some bass fishing all day yesterday, but today I'm down here trying to get this video done, and I got some seeds I need to get in the ground before it rains here in a couple days. Now, uh, this overall video is just about doing off-season maintenance and property improvements. You know, some people's got some trees that's falling down on their deer trails that they need to get out of the way. Or maybe you're creating new deer trails. Maybe you need to do some timber thinning and hinge cutting to get some brows down on the deer's level. Uh, you know, get your, your minerals out, get your protein and feeders out. Or maybe you're putting in a food plot or you're doing food plot maintenance. Now, I've been doing a lot of that over the past couple weeks that you'll see on this video. And when you see me coming down through the food plot on my ATV spraying, that's a selective herbicide called Clothodium. What that does is it allows me to spray this clover without harming it, but it'll kill all the grasses. And then they have something called Butyrac, which will do the same thing, but it takes out your broadleaf, so it won't hurt your clovers. Now, uh, I've also sprayed some glyphosate on both ends of the food plot. And, and you see right down here down the middle, I sprayed it down the middle. And I did that because I'm going to be tilling this up, and I'm going to be putting in some... Uh, Egyptian wheat and some switch grass. Now I would have planted them together, but the switch grass can't be, or the Egyptian wheat can't be planted when there's a danger of frost. So I'm waiting until now to plant them both together. And the Egyptian wheat will grow up tall this year, giving me cover this year. And the uh, switch grass takes a couple years to, to get going. It has to go through a stratification process too. So um, that's what's going on here. And I'm doing that because this food plot is over 300 yards long. And uh, there's deer that bed on both sides of it. The overall visibility of this food plot's on the pipeline, so you can see about 700 yards, but the food plot's 300 yards. Now, especially later on in the season, the, the bucks will come out across the pipeline, and they'll look down through here, and if they don't see any does, they'll keep on going. So this food plot barrier will be up, and they'll have to come through the screens and actually check in the food plot before they can keep on going when they're checking for does. And it's also just good for uh, food plot security. So. That's what we'll be doing. I'll show you a before and after video of the food plot maintenance. Right now it's full of grasses. The clover's not really released yet. So after I spray the clothodium and, and mow it down, I'll show you after and you'll see where the clover is just completely released. Well, I hope y'all enjoyed this video and was able to get some valuable information out of it. Like I was saying, the springtime is a perfect time to get outside and start doing your property maintenance. It's not too hot yet, and you got to think about them does about to drop the fawns. You want to get them fawns off to a healthy start. You want to help the mama does as much as you can. Likewise with the bucks, you want to be able to hold and attract them to your property when they're dispersing, and you want to get them antlers off to a good start growing. Same thing with your food plot. You want to get these under control before the summer grasses start taking over and choking out your food plot. Hey, if you ain't already, subscribe, hit that like button, comment down below, and we'll see you next time right here on Strung Out Outdoors.